Since the early 1990s, Providence has undergone major growth, what many have called a renaissance. The Providence Place Mall, the Convention Center, Water Place Park, all have helped to bring new life to our city. And today, the growth continues. Several high-rises with offices, residences, shops, and restaurants have dramatically changed the skyline and landscape of the city, as well as its network of streets and highways. I-195 and its connection to I-95 was built in the 1950s, so it should be no surprise that it no longer meets our traffic demands today. Originally designed to accommodate 75,000 vehicles each day, it currently serves more than twice that amount, with a majority of those 150,000 vehicles crisscrossing the I-95, I-195 interchange. The highway has withstood the daily wear and tear but by today's standards, it has an obsolete design, narrow shoulders, inadequate number and width of lanes, and exit ramps positioned too closely together. Because of these concerns, what was an initial safety improvement study evolved into a major realignment and reconstruction project now known as the I-Way. Based on numerous studies and public hearings, the Rhode Island Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration identified the area south of the hurricane barrier as the best path for the new highway. The highway construction project consists of multiple stages to take place over a 12-year period. In future podcasts, we'll learn about other highlights, like the layout of the new highway and its improved traffic flow viewed from a driver's seat in a computer-generated simulation the construction of the signature bridge at Quonset Point and its dramatic arrival by barge to its final resting point in front of the hurricane barrier. Improvements to India Point Park and the new pedestrian bridge and the dramatic new waterfront that will emerge after the old highway is finally demolished and the city's renaissance continues. <laughs>